Joe did refuse to travel the world to collect these honors. He simply didn't want to leave his beloved coast and his colorful waves. But those waters turned on him in 1969 when Hurricane Camille ripped into his home and studio. The water's coming in, and I remember my younger brothers and sisters put their life jackets on because we knew it was going to be deep. We weren't sure if we were trapped already. We thought we were far enough in. That's why we didn't evacuate. A lot of people didn't because this was the worst hurricane we've ever had. We had 200 mile an hour winds with 250 mile an hour gusts. And um, most of them average 100 to 150 miles an hour, which are devastating as they are. And Camille, we went out the back of the building, and we went up two more houses, because our ground was higher in the back than the front. And that water line came all the way up. We were 17 feet above sea level. That water line came all the way up to where the building we were staying with our neighbor. Once again, Joe lost everything, including 200 paintings. As he rebuilt his home, there was an amazing discovery. And mom goes, we found skeletons under the house. And I'm like, oh no, not hurricane victims, you know. And she's like, no, no, these are they're just skeletons, but they were real old. And of course we had the coroner and the police department, everybody, they taped everything off with the yellow rope. And, and they started doing testing on them and uncover them. And we had the state archaeologists come in to do, to, they slowly uncover them with brushes and stuff. And there were 13 skeletons and they believed to be your early settlers around 1699. They averaged them 300 to 500 years old. And uh, so that was quite a shock for the family. Joe took this news in typical stride. He opened his graveyard to the public as a state historical site. Both Mary and her brother Tommy inherited their father's love for the coast and his talent. Well, I started drawing because I saw Daddy drawing. I was like, oh, I want to try that, you know, and it, he couldn't hardly keep me away from him. And he'd pick up a paintbrush to paint. And so finally, on the big backdrops, I was probably about five or six then, but he, he'd give me a paintbrush and said, here, go fill in, go paint me a tree over here. And he actually let me work with him on some of the Mardi Gras backdrops. And, I, so I started painting at a very early age. Throughout his painting and painting years, he actually influenced all of us as children to appreciate life and, and look at things in a different way. So you'd be driving along the beach and he'll see a sunset and point out, look how beautiful the colors are. Look how the, the, the colors are reflecting in the waves and look at the sand. He'd just point out a lot of little things in life to, and really appreciate and love life. Joe was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease in the 1980s and began a slow and sad decline. Although he could barely see, he struggled to paint until he could no longer hold a brush in 1993. He died in 1999. Joe's final paintings were, as always, of the boats. With this, his final sunset. We should have recognized him uh, before his death because he was a great Biloxian and he was a, a good friend of everybody. I don't believe he ever had an enemy in his life and every time anyone would come there he would explain uh, how he built the boats and then he took his art to all of the school children and taught them how to uh, do drawings and uh, paintings and, and things like that. Most Biloxians, and Joe is one of them, is self-taught. And once he put uh, the brush to the uh, drawing board and everything, it just came out, it flowed out. He's sadly missed, but we knew that uh, his professionalism and everything that he did uh, will be an asset to his family, to the community, and the state of Mississippi, and the entire world. And, Things like that only come once in a lifetime, and Joe was one of those special people of once in a lifetime. And we're thankful that he was from Biloxi, Mississippi, and uh, we're, we're awful proud of him, and I think that uh, eventually there will be uh, a museum uh, that will be in his honor because he excelled himself 
and he was self-taught. Uh, he was a great person, great historian, and everything about him excels. And that's great with Joe Moran. Joe Moran's art represents Biloxi's history when life was slower in simpler days. And even toward the end of his life, Joe believed his work was far from finished.